there was so much reality in it. And I've been asked a million times, what was John Wayne like? Mm. And I said, he was the most significant father figure a person could exactly. be around. Mm -hmm. John Wayne was a father figure. He was a man you would look up to as an icon. You would love him as your father. And there's an enormous respect and love that I have for him and always will mm -hmm. always have. Yeah. And um, that will never go away. Hi, I'm Rob Ward. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. We are honoring one of the great Westerns of all time, made in 1972, it's called? The Cowboys. And I've got two of those cowboys here with me right now. I have Steve Hudis and Al Barker. Right here. You may not recognize them, but they were great in that movie. It still gets better all the time. And I thank you guys for coming out here to visit with us and to share stories of working with John Wayne. Al, how did you get cast in that? Well, the story that I'm told by my father is uh, we had friends in the rodeo business and the junior rodeo, and um, they were looking for a hefty kid who could ride and rope. And so one of our friends got a hold of or gave them our information. And one day I'm riding this goofy colt that we were riding, working in our pasture. And my dad leaves the house and goes to the house to take a phone call. He comes out and he says, hey, how'd you like to be in a movie with John Wayne? I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> what kid wouldn't? He says, no, I'm serious. They're, they want you to come and do an audition. I'm, well, yeah, of course. Uh, you get me there and I'll be happy to do that. It'd be wonderful. How old and were you then? I was 14, uh -huh. or about 14, just maybe give or take a few days. Well, you have that great scene with Duke after each of you are given the test to see if you could stay on the horse and, and you tell him your name and he goes, I got a tendency toward that myself. Yeah. Toward the gut myself. <laughs> toward the gut. Yeah. I always remembered that. A great scene. All of you each had special moments. Steve, how did you get cast? Well, it was an interesting uh, process they used because about half the cast was experienced working actors and the other half were from the cowboy world. And I think director Mark Rydell's idea was, was brilliant because we both kind of fed off each other, learned from each other, and um, the two culture backgrounds just seemed to work. So I was already fairly well established working regularly, so I just went through the regular audition process, oh, ho hum, you know. But uh, it was a very big cattle call at first, and then less and less, and it was very nerve rattling because we were, I mean, John Wayne, I mean, it was just unbelievable. So things. all the people in the cattle call, the groups, uh, as you were auditioning, mm -hmm. did you recognize some of the other child actors? Yeah, I'm sure I did. I mean, I couldn't say mm -hmm. now who mm -hmm. was there, but pretty much anybody who was working in those days was probably there. As it whittled down to the smaller group, yeah. when did Mark Rydell come in to talk to you? Yeah, so the first couple of auditions were probably with Lynn Stallmaster. I what believe, a great you know, casting legendary. director, wow. So, and I, I'd known him and he, he, he knew me and stuff. So I think probably the second or third callback Mm -hmm. was when it really got serious with, with Mark. And um, yeah, it just one day you get the call and next thing you're on a, on a plane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what had you done before? I'd done a lot of TV. In fact, this was my only feature film. Mm -hmm. But I'd done things like uh, Medical Center. Mark, I did a Medical Center with... Didn't you do uh, a, a, a show yeah. with Steven Spielberg directing? I did, I did, back before he was Steven Spielberg. He uh, was just Stevie, he was little just, Stevie? Yeah, he was uh, directing some TV at Universal. And the psychiatrist the, with Roy, wow, yes, Roy very Thinnis. Good, the psychiatrist, yeah. and uh, I played the, the lead character. Somebody, somebody wrote in, I was a disturbed kid, I had mental issues, you know. <laughs> but actually somebody had written in saying, wow, it was amazing you hired a really mentally disturbed kid. So I fit right in. But you know, Adam 12, all of that stuff. It was great, I had a nice run, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
it's over. So what was Stephen like then? Yeah, Stephen. You know, he was a genius, obviously, and he he, he was uh, almost was, your age, wasn't he? He was a, only a little older. <laughs> yeah, about eight years, 21, 22. But everybody, you could just tell he had that something about him. He mm -hmm. he called me a thinking actor in an interview once, which was I thought it was pretty cool. Uh -huh. So yeah, I was pretty lucky, pretty lucky to work with the people I got to work with. When you first met Duke, what was that like? It was amazing. Nick and I um, were there. We were kind of like getting up the nerve, you know, to go to talk to him. And you mentioned his humility. I mean, it is just paramount. We, we got up the nerve to introduce ourselves, and we walk up and we go, hi, I'm, I'm Steve. And he goes, hello, I'm John Wayne, you know, as if he <laughs> needed to introduce himself. <laughs> he was so gracious. You know, it was, it was mind-blowing, the whole, mm -hmm. just this larger-than-life man. And, the, and the, we were just so, so lucky. <laughs> well, Al, on set, were you helping out the non-writers? I'll tell you what, it was, a, it was a pretty interesting experience because not a sawhorse was safe back at the, back at, back at, back at the um, hotel there in Santa Fe. We raided the construction yard and stole every sawhorse they had for rope and dummies. Uh -huh. yeah. And sure. all these guys would come out, and, and Clay O'Brien was out there, Norman Hal, Weedy, uh, Mike Pyatt, and myself. We're all out there yahooing and roping the dummies and carrying on and these guys all got involved and we were handing them ropes and here this is how you do this yeah. the next thing you know the whole bunch of us is coming back to the hotel after the day on the set and we're having roping jackpots on these roping dummies you know <laughs> 10 story. 15 Too 20 story. cents you know roping <laughs> jackpots roping these dummies head them heat them and then they started making those plastic heads that you mm -hmm. can put on these saw mm -hmm. horses and there was a tackle store, or a tack store, I said tackle because I'm a fisherman, but a, a tack store not far away that we, we were able to pick up some of those, and that's all we did. Be, 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 besides owning the pool, yeah. <laughs> and owning the whole grass area, and driving the maintenance people crazy, I mean, we owned the hotel when we were there. And we all these guys, we, we co-mingled so well, <laughs> and co- uh, had such good relationships. Guys stayed together, uh, bunked together. How did they pick who bunked with who? I do not know. I mm -hmm. have no idea. Well, yeah, they they, were, they assigned together. you. You didn't we, get to we pick. We were together for uh -huh. a bit, and then we were each with somebody else for a bit, and I don't know how that was uh, determined. Mm -hmm. um, it was a kick in the pants, though, i tell you. Mm -hmm. Well, out on location, and you're working with these really fine adult actors. Roscoe Lee Brown, just incredible. Yeah. Colleen Dewhurst, Slim yeah. Pickens. And Slim, Slim's in the schoolhouse too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? so. Amazing, yeah, Roscoe was something else. He was, yeah, well they all were, but it was. Well how, well how did Roscoe interact with you kids? Paternally like he did in the movie? In, in a way, yeah, I mean he was definitely a mysterious you know, character <laughs> to all of us. And he was this wonderfully uh, trained Shakespearean mm -hmm. actor. I remember a lot of time at lunch, uh, Bobby would get on the guitar and he would do, Shakespeare, uh, Roscoe would do some Shakespearean sonnets and it was just captivating. Wow. You know, he was such an How interesting great. man. And he came to see me years later at a theater I was doing some work at and we kept in touch. And, he was a, an amazing What man. wonderful Great memories. Actor. But then the movie gets dark mm -hmm. with Bruce Dern and yeah. that sequence where Bruce brutalizes him, shoots him in the back, mm -hmm. and what was that like? It was tough. John Wayne, told, John Wayne told Bruce Dern before this scene, you're gonna be the most hated man in Hollywood. Bruce was a unique character. We would be riding the bus up the mountain to go to the set, and Bruce would be running. Yeah, oh yeah. Bruce was a, a physical yeah, fitness. At that altitude, 15, that altitude. 20 miles a day, mm -hmm. show up to the set. Well, he had a brilliant response <laughs> to what, when Duke said you're gonna be hated around the world, he said, yeah, but in Berkeley, I'm gonna be a Hell hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they loved him there. <laughs> you know, but people, say, I mean, they say, oh, Bruce Dern killed you. You know, his character killed you. Yeah. I mean, but he, he was intense. He was an intense actor. And watching that scene, I think we all were very it was disturbing, you know, mm -hmm. even though it was fake. And then the scene with Nick, oh, he'll talk about that later, yeah. I'm sure, but that was something. Well, the scene when, when we put, or when Duke was telling us, you know, summer's over, you mm -hmm. know, a man always wants his sons to be better than he was. Yeah. You are. You yeah. are. Mm -hmm. That was heart-wrenching. That was so real mm -hmm. and yeah. so heart-wrenching. I mean, the tears, they didn't have to put drops in my eyes. Yeah. My tears flowed like water. He only died in four of his films, right, Patrick? I think it was four, maybe five, Sansa Wiwajima, 
Alamo, the Cowboys, and the Shooters, I believe. The script, it just is, is so amazing because it starts off, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the drovers quit to go look for gold and he's got to go to the schoolhouse and find these kids. And then it's just a lot of laughs as they're training yeah. and riding uh, as they learn to be cowboys. There was so much reality in it. And I've been asked a million times, what was John Wayne like? Mm. And I said, he was the most significant father figure a person could exactly. be around. Mm -hmm. John Wayne was a father figure. He was a man you would look up to as an icon you would love him as your father, and you just, I don't know, there's an enormous respect and love that I have for him and always will mm -hmm. always have, yeah. and um, that will never go away. He, he, um, it was, the film was shot mostly in sequence, mm -hmm. which was also clever because it, it allowed everybody's relationship to, to come to fruition. You know, at first he was aloof and all the other kids and everything, you know, and then he warmed to us and, mm -hmm. and we to him and to each other. Mm -hmm. And it showed, it showed on the screen, I think. Did you all play pranks during the film? <laughs> I don't know about that so much. Um, <laughs> you, were so just, much you were just kids. You were kids, it was okay. Yeah. Well, we uh, was talking to a couple of the guys earlier. <laughs> and the, when we stayed in Pagosa Springs, these were really nice little cabin-like uh, motels with kitchenettes mm -hmm. and everything in them. And they were owned by the mayor. Mm -hmm. And the mayor had to enact legislation because of us. What? Uh -oh. Well, it was near 4th of July. Fireworks were prevalent. And there was a young man that sold them to us there in town. <laughs> well, we had some bottle rocket fights and some bottle rocket <laughs> activities. <laughs> and the mayor decided that that was really not a good idea around his older wooden shingle roof <laughs> hotels. <laughs> so he, he created legislation and outlawed the sale of fireworks in Pagosa <laughs> Springs. So some of us, I won't say who, but some of us, <laughs> got in the pickup truck with this guy, went to the outskirts of town, bought the fireworks, brought them back in, and continued our ill-mannered ill, our Ill behavior. <laughs> <laughs> and did the mayor come down on your heart after that? Lifetime ban. Oh. No. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know, but uh, we never really got in much in, of any trouble. I mean, we, we own... There were so many the of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pagosa Springs is a small town. You know, it's like one street, yeah. one restaurant, a hardware store, a little grocery store. And, and when you have us, our chaperones, the And crews, the stunt doubles. There the were also stunt 11 oh, stunt, stunt doubles who were also the crews, kids. So. The, 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 the stunt men in general, mm -hmm. everybody that was there. Crazy. Crazy well, you times. mentioned your chaperones. Was, was that your parents or was that somebody else? All our moms played our moms in mm -hmm. the film. Yeah. It was really cool. My stepmom was there. Who Taft played hardly them? That's and, nice. And, uh, that wow. Yeah, so their parents were. It's were like watching wonderful. a home movie for you guys, yeah, isn't it? Was, it? it was cool. Yeah. It was, yeah. To this day, she still gets a little residual shake. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, I, I see that you were not just popular from the Cowboys and some of your other films, but you were on the cover of Teen Beat and yeah. 16. Yeah. Got a lot of fan mail from those little teenage girls. A little teen heartthrob going yeah, on there. So yeah, so what was, what was that like? You know, it's surreal, really. You know, <laughs> I mean, when, when you're that young to have that much... I'm sorry, my... <laughs> <laughs> you all talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> to have that much thrown at you at a young age. It's, it's a little daunting, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, mm -hmm. it just all happens so quickly and, and you just kind of roll with it, you know, but it's, it's definitely has, um, it has an effect on you and not all, not all good, you know, a bit mm -hmm. of a brat attitude. And Did you learn much from stuff. the soiled doves in the movie? The soiled doves? <laughs> yeah, so Charlie was already, uh, you know, he died by then, so I would have liked to, but yeah. uh, fortunately, yeah. unfortunately, no, but uh, it was... Quite a ride, five or six years. In, in that stampede where your character dies, yeah. how much of that did you do and how much was your stuntman? Very, Stunt very good question, yeah. yeah. So we'd all had weeks and weeks of riding training before any of the cameras rolled, long time, which was smart for obvious reasons because I hadn't really ridden before and some of the others had and some hadn't and these guys were experts. So they had acting lessons and we had riding lessons. So the short answer is... Um, I learned how to, there was a horse that would rear up, and that was what he did. 
So we went out, the second unit with Buzz Henry, and uh, close up, and I just had to ride it out while he um, reared up and kind of ro start to roll back. And they had two guys there to catch me. And then Dan Summerford, my stunt double, mm -hmm. God rest his soul, unfortunately, um, did the full fall off the back into the... Uh, and you got into doing some stunt work, too, after... I did, yeah. I, that was, um, I was always... When I was doing Mob Squad and other shows like that, I was always looking at the stunt people. I thought, that's cool, you know, that's cool. So, yeah, I kind of drifted into that side of it and had a very good career doing that for 30 years or so. I had a world record bus jump. I, well, that was the school bus that was on fire jumping over motorcycles, bus, yeah. right? Yes, it was, an <laughs> Evil Knievel flip. Yeah, yeah. School kids were late that day, but they had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, retired from that, and now I just do what I do, you know? Thank you both for joining Thank us today. You for and us. a lot of us wanted to be there with you. And to, to see you together, all you guys, is, is a thrill. And I love watching that movie. And the score, the cinematography, oh, everything works on that. And they don't make movies like that anymore. It's all superhero stuff. Yeah, and, right. you know, Duke was a superhero to me. Yep. Thank you for being here. Yeah, Thank I'd you. like to give one, one quick yeah, shout sure. out if I could. We've been doing a thing. If you remember the cattle drive, the cattle drive was supposed to have ended in Belfouche, South Dakota. Oh, right, right. The northern, or the, the, the northern cattle drives would be on railheads going out of Belfouche, South Dakota. And I have a friend back there that orchestrated all of us, as, and I think all of us that are here have been there a couple of times. We, I, I was involved with it for about eight years. The people of Belfouche love the movie. So let me give a shout out to Stacy and Greg at the American Inn and yep. the uh, Businessmen's Association that promote this for us. <laughs> Thank you both for joining us Thank to you. celebrate the 50th anniversary. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, um, when I knew this event was coming, uh, you know, I wanted to commemorate it somehow, and I wanted to pay tribute to my fellow actors and, of course, John Wayne, and just the whole experience itself. So I wrote it Friday. <laughs> Please forgive me. I've got my notes here. But the melody, interestingly enough, I heard this artist playing earlier, Marty Robbins. I'm sure you're familiar with him. I borrowed a little melody from one of his greatest songs, Big Iron. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's a bit of a parody, it's a bit of a tribute, and um, it's heartfelt. So here we go. 40 years in the business, I still get stage fright, so. <laughs> Early morning, April 1st in 1971. 11 lucky boys, an adventure just begun. We'd learn how to ride horses, and we'd learn how to shoot guns. But never in our wildest dreams thought we'd have so much fun. We'd all have so much fun. Alan, Mike, Sean, A, and me flew off to Santa Fe. With Bobby Norman, Bobby, Norman, Nick and Steve, and brothers Sam and Clay. We couldn't wait to meet the man, the legend John Wayne, the two. He was everything we thought he'd be that no one could rebuke. We were working with the dude. The first day on the set, we were as nervous as could be. But the great John Wayne was welcoming, yeah, he put us all at ease. He was gracious, kind, and humble, no, none of that big star noise. He was like a father to eleven lucky boys, eleven lucky boys. He was there to comfort me when I fell off my horse. On screen he read my eulogy When Charlie's trail changed course And when it was all over We were like a family 
And I want the other guys to know how much you mean to me You all mean so much to me The last time I laid eyes upon the master of the train I saw him at the Oscars God, he looked so thin and frail I couldn't stand to see him that way Not the man I knew When he died an era passed Old Hollywood was through Gone for me and you The cowboys are all old men now Pensions and Medicare Some of us have lost and gained some weight And some have lost their hair But no matter what the years may bring us Laughter, tears, and joy Those memories will live forever For eleven lucky boys And I'm so glad I was One of eleven lucky boys I was a very lucky boy